Okay, Jean is recording the demo, so we we should be able to download the video and share it share it with you all, so you don't really have to record the demo. If you don't, if you you may if you you can feel free if you want to, but I will we'll try to post this or send it out to the group, uh, you know, some way to get it to you in, in in any any way that we can. So again, what we've done is we've we've got a few caveats with this statutory data collection. Probably one of the odious, most odious things is, is we have to, they've actually required, unlike the federal collection that some of you do for foreign uh, gifts, is they've required the actual document of the gift uh, to be included with the, with, with the information about that gift. Uh, our general counsel has put out, uh, you know, went through the statute line by line and, and put together the template to make sure that when the data and the information that's coming in, we meet all the statutory requirements that you're supposed to report. And then again, along with a actual document of from that entity. And we did just recently had uh, someone mentioned in, a, uh, I think it was probably three weeks ago, that uh, sometimes they'll get a gift and they don't even have a contract or a written document. And so uh, we've had to think about what to do there. We're going to have to have some type of placeholder or some kind of memo de declaring that because a big part of this is that after the initial collection, our compliance office, our uh, inspector general's office is going to be required to take a sampling of these records and these contracts slash gift documents and do some auditing and some follow up on these records. So again, you know, our goal at this point is to meet that statutory requirement for the January 31st data collection. So with that, we've built an application and I'm going to turn it over to Felsi uh, for the demo. Before I do that, if anyone wants to stay on after, I know we've had some affiliated organizations, organizations. came on to this meeting. Um, and if their corresponding data administrators are here, if you guys want to stay on after this meeting to discuss access management and some things, some detail there, 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 you know, it, every institution across the system is doing it a little bit different. But uh, if if you want to stay on after and discuss access management, how we make sure we give you access or how you want to manage this, we're more than willing. We'll, we'll stay on the meeting as long as we need to. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Felsi to actually show you the application. Thank you, Jean. Can you all see my screen? Yes. OK. So this is our portal app. So this is the app you will be using to access any of the board applications. So I'm, I'm going to log in as FPU. Felsi, could you make the screen any larger? Just hey, also for, for any of you who are not, Teams is a little different. I know a lot of folks are using Zoom. If you see the, the three dot hamburger menu at the top right hand, depending on what version of Teams you're on, uh, there is a thing, there's a, a little line probably about, there's a, a menu option. I don't know, it's eight or nine down that says focus on content. When you press that, it will kind of give you a little bit larger screen area also. That helps me, uh, I sometimes struggle visually with. Uh, I made it bigger of, also. But hopefully you will be able to see it better now. So when you log in to the portal application, if you have access to the information request system, you will see a link on, on the portal application. Now, if you don't see a link here, that means you do not have access. So you have to contact your data administrators if you need access to the information request system. So click on, I click on the link. So of course it will ask you to log in again. So I'm, I'm logging in. Um, as SPU, this is our test system. So the data here is test data.
So this is the information request system application. So this is the home page. You see a calendar. And you will see the information request entry on the deadline date. So here there is a report. You will be seeing only active information requests. What do I mean by active information request is a memo has been sent from the board office to the data administrators asking for the data submission before the deadline. Mm -hmm. So currently there is just one active information request you haven't received. You have just received memo for foreign gifts and contracts. So that's the reason you're not seeing any other information requests. Now this shows here at the bottom you can see the status of your data submission. In the report, the status says it's pending. The due date is January 28th. Now, if an institution, if you submit the data, this entry will become blue. If the board office asked for resubmission, this entry will be orange. And if the board office has accepted the data, you will see this green. So the color will indicate the status of your data submission. Now you see a report tab. We will come back to that report tab later. You see a template tab. Now when you click on the template tab, you will see the system is just slow. So you will see the templates for foreign gifts, cost of attendance and presidential salary. We suggest you to download the latest version of the template. Mm -hmm. From here, our inspector general staff has added extra instructions there. So, so download the template from the application and then you prepare the data. Hey, Felsi, quick question. So you said download the template from there. When when did the did the template change recently or if we've downloaded it in the last week, we're OK? Yeah, you are good, James. Yes. OK, thank you. Um, so I'm I'm coming back to the home page. So you click on this link foreign gifts and contracts. Could you just pull up the template to, to look at it? Download it from here and look at it. Yes. OK. I'm going to the template. I'm, I'm downloading foreign gifts and contracts. I think so. Oh, Prop see, this is a test system, so I'm not okay. sure. I'm not sure how it is in prod. So this okay. is a template, but it has some test data in it. So the second tab has requirements and instructions. So this is where you will see the intro instructions how to prepare your data. Uh, what what each field is the definition for each field. So this is this the second tab is the important tab. The first tab is is for you to prepare the gift records. So any questions on the template? Um, I had a question. This is Ken from USF. Uh, the University Re uh, Reserve field number one there. Yes. Uh, can we utilize that to designate different entities? This is an in, this is this is an internal field that the institutions ask for, so you can use it however the way you want. Is that right, Gene? Yes, actually. So I think the the nomenclature, the the SUD system for the student data collection has a field similar to this one, 
And I think the idea was, especially since you're, you, you have a potential for, for taking the template and moving it out to different organizations or subgroups within your university, or as we know now, affiliates outside your university, if you choose to do it that way. Um, this field can allow you, if there's any issue with data quality, or if there's a question from our office, to identify that within the template, that record within the template, because we really don't have a way other than the, uh, you know, we didn't want it, we couldn't force a fake numbering system, you know, some type of counter because we have so many different groups and subgroups across the system doing it in different ways. So this is a, a university specific field, or you could say an entity specific field. Let me use the, uh, uh, you know, IHMC as an example, since I know they're on here, um, you they could use this to say, you know, IHMC, uh, you know, document one, and then they could they could put a, n a number there. And if there's any issue later, let's say the information gets uploaded, it comes all the way to the board office, and someone sees something funny, or for some reason they say, hey, it's missing this, or this isn't doesn't look right, they could communicate that back to you and say, hey, it's the, uh, you know, IHMC uh, record number three is, uh, says it's a gift, but, you know, ABCD, you know, or something, something, they can use it as a, a point of communication. But again, you, you can make it university centric or you could make it uh, subunit or affiliate centric. That's really up to each individual institution. We didn't want. We don't control this field. We don't edit it. We don't do anything with it. We wanted to allow you a place to be able to put internal controls. All right, thank you. It fell seat. I have a question, yeah. Sonia from UF. Um, so when you first said download the spreadsheet, do you, do you mean download from my own computer? Where, where, download where did from you the mean? application. So there is a template tab in the application. Okay. So when you click on the tab, you will see a report and you will see download. Okay, report. gotcha. Okay. okay. So you will click that button and then it will download a template. And then when you want to save it, you just hit you, save? You will or? save it to your local, yes. Okay. Yeah, the templates are in Excel document, so either you can download one centrally and distribute that or again, I mean, this would even uh, affiliates would have the ability once they have access to the system to go in and download a fresh, clean template themselves. And Felsi, would you bring up the template again for a minute? Yes. yes. Let, let me just really quick. We tried to put as many because we realize these are going to be distributed to uh, different groups and subgroups. We wanted to make sure we put as much control at the front. Now we couldn't, you know, Excel's a little funny. You can put some validations in there, but it's very difficult to do complex cross validations without actual coding, you know, VB, Visual Basic. So there, this this template is locked down. Uh, there are drop downs wherever there they were at, uh, you know, they would work. For example, in the country code or the, the foreign source name, Celsi, drop down that, click on that and do a drop down. Oh, this one. Yeah. So you'll see there's a list and we're using, I think, the, I want to say ISC. I can't remember which nomenclature. We're using one of the official uh, country list uh, here. So you can drop this down to pick the country it's coming from. If you have multiple ones coming from the same country, once you start typing them, once you get it in there once. We put drop downs to try to help you. Uh, so you would, you know, to keep everything consistent. Uh, same thing on the type of foreign source. You can see anywhere there was a standard uh, that, of information that we're actually looking for, we put a drop down in there. Now, please remember this is the test system you're looking at. Uh, the data here and the, even this template, I do notice, uh, I think we're missing something in this template. Uh, oh, no, there, no, there it is. Okay, the, the, these are the gift the types. Student, you were looking yeah, for student, student sponsorship, right? Student sponsorship, yes, correct. And we, we, we'll talk about that later as we, after we finish the demo if we need to. But so everything's locked down. You have to put a number in for the actual amount 
dates have to be you know required for date fields and I, we put the format up there to know, so you would know how to type it in uh and if you scroll to the right felsi scroll to the right yeah, yeah. Uh, there are a set of questions here once you get over here um that are required these are the ones that are required by statute uh does this gift or contract uh, control any any type of faculty? Does it control any student admissions, et cetera, et cetera? And these are Boolean, yes or no. And you just, you, you again, there's a drop down. It has to be yes or no. Uh, once you fill one in as you type, they'll, they'll pre-fill, as, as you know, if you're used to Excel. But we did this, so the template is fairly locked down. You can't, you know, there are a few open fields like a comment field and the, re the reference field and a few others. So we tried to make it so the, the person filling out this data, hopefully will, it'll be fairly smooth and easy um, for you because we know it's gonna be a little tedious, but that's the template where you're gonna be putting the information. And the only other caveat here, Felsi, scroll, uh, scroll over to the actual file field. And these are in the instructions, but when you look here, we have to associate the actual uh, no, you went too a little too far. I, 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 yeah. Oh, do you see it, Gene? I don't. Yeah, see I, it. You, know, you go. go you, you had it up. Go to the right. Go to the right. Yeah, it I see it's it. A, here. It's the color coded. The kind of. Uh, yeah. I don't know what color you would call that. So in this section right here, the document type. You know, if it's a, it, it's either a gift, a, a gift or a contract agreement. Um. The file name, this is where you actually, we, we are requiring a specific file name that is coming to, with this record. So if someone has a contract or a gift document, th this name of this document is what's going to match it up with this record. And you do have to type that into the uh, spreadsheet. And we are requiring PDF documents, although you could probably type something else in here, but when you got to load, it wouldn't load. But this is this is probably going to be probably the most odious thing for the individual preparing these records as they go through and put and fill out the template is they're going to have to look and say, OK, this is the uh, Japanese uh, Ministry of Agriculture's gift. Uh, and I'm going to call it the you know, and you're going to have to actually put the file name into this field. And we do validate that when you load the data and you'll see that in the demo. But that's again, we tried to make the template as locked down as possible to per, to make sure the data integrity was good. Hey, so, Jane. Yeah. I, I have a question on the dates. So, for example, if a gift, if you, it is a gift, you will not have a contract start date and end date. W will it Correct. force you to put a date or it's no. not? No. Okay. No, the template is more open and you'll see when, as Felsi goes through the demo, when you load it up, um, we do have valid cross validations once you load it into the database and we can actually do a little more controlled validation. Uh, like I said, Excel was a little difficult to do that with. Um, but Felsi is going to demonstrate that. So I just, again, the template, people have to be a little familiar with Excel maybe, but we tried to make it as user friendly as we could. So you couldn't put the wrong thing in the field if possible. Not everything is editable though, <laughs> as you know. Yeah. You will find all of these instructions in this tab, but of course, if you have questions, you can always reach out to us. Now, let's go into the application. So, I, you click on this link, Foreign Gifts and Contracts. Felsi? Yes. Sorry to interrupt you. It looked like there were a couple hands raised. Do we want to take questions as you go along? Oh, we can, we can. I, I haven't gone to the system yet, so. Yeah, I, I guess Alex Tazuma is here at New College. Um, so I, I, I'm, we're pretty small, um, our, our research program. And I'm wondering, are, will we need, if we don't have any qualifying grants, will we have to follow file a nil report so they know that we haven't not filed or forgotten? No, Alex, at, and this is at the university level. So since we have affiliates and some subgroups on the call, uh, I want to make sure that, you know, so 
an institution, New College, for example, and we got this, you know, you really from New College who, who brought this up, you may have no gifts that meet the statutory requirement at all for the entire year. Uh, and in that situation, we did provide a mechanism, as you can see on the screen, immediately there's a button that says no gifts to report. We do not require a dummy spreadsheet. Uh, but we do require you to go in and click into the system because since this is an audit compliance situation, we will want to be able to track the fact that you did report you had no gifts. And Felsi is going to show you. I that. think that's my first scenario. So, Perfect. so my first Perfect. scenario was like like Jean said, your institution you don't have any gifts to report for this collection period. So what do you do? So here, when you come here, you have instructions here. The first instruction says if you have no gifts to report, click on the no gifts to report button. So I have logged in as the FPU. I don't have any gifts to report. So when I click on that no gifts to report button, there is a confirmation message pop up. All it says is FPU has not received any gift directly or indirect, indirectly from any foreign source during this collection period. So you need to confirm. The system is slow, Gene. See that? I know. Production will be a lot faster, guys. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> Best instance is slow. So one, once you confirmed that you don't have any gifts to report, it's not, it's not, not moving fast. Still loading. Okay. So what happens is it it introduces a record there and then all of these fields are not applicable and then your confirmation confirmation message appears on the gift comments. So now you are the data administrator so you see this record and then all you need to do is submit to board. So when you press that button submit to board, you can see now the system is all locked and email and email has been so an email has been sent to the board office telling hey FPU has submitted their data. Now if you go to the home home tab, the status has changed to submitted. You see submitted. This one is blue in color. So this shows that FPU is all done. And then if you want to come back and see what has been submitted to the board office, go to the reports tab and click foreign gifts and contract documents. You will see two sections there. So you will see two sections, the top Report says this is the data submitted to the board office and the bottom portion says the data accepted by the board office. Now we have just submitted the data. So this is the data that has been said, submitted to the board office. Now any questions on how to report if you don't have any gifts to report? Now I'm going to log in as UF. Show you how to report gifts. Logging in as a uploader or a reviewer, and then I will log in as a submitter and show the difference. So I'm logging into the portal app, and then I click on the information request system link. I have to log in again. OK, so now for UF, you can see the status is pending. We haven't submitted that data yet. So I click on that 
link from the report, it will take me to a page where I can upload the template. <coughs> Prod is not this slow, this, this desk system is slow. So here you see two buttons. One is no gifts to report that, that we logged in as FPU and I showed you how to do it. There is another button that says upload gifts data. I have included the instructions here as well. So if you have a template that you want to upload, you, you press this upload gifts data button. Then it will take you to this page and then here I just want you to follow these instructions. The first instruction says upload the Excel template. So I click on that browse button and I'm uploading an Excel template that has some test data. The second instruction number two says press the parse button. So I'm going to press the parse button. And it says you should see the gift records on the screen. So I press the props button. And when you come down, you see the gifts record on your screen. Number three says enter the line number corresponding to the last gift record on the screen. So the line number is three. So there is a box number of gift records, you have to enter that line number corresponding to your last gift record. So I'm going to enter three here. Number four, instruction number four, press upload data. So you come down, you will see the upload data button. You upload, press that button. Mm. Now, the app, the application, the system is loading the data from your Excel template to the application. Just not fast enough for me. OK. So now it has uploaded the data from the Excel template. And you see, I, I, I do have instructions here. If you have bad gift records that failed validations, you will see a report listing the bad records. So this is the bad records that failed validations. I have just two records and I didn't prepare my file correctly, so I both of my records fail. So I'm going to show you how to. So there are two things that you do. If you come up, you see that the submit button is disabled. The first thing you need to do is correct your data, bad data. And then the second thing you need to do is upload the contract document for every gift record. So to correct the data, it, it gives you validation messages here, what, what went wrong with that gift record. But, but this is the easy way to do. You press on the pencil icon under edit. It will give you a form to edit your data. not loading. OK. When you when you have this form. The first thing you do is update. When you do update, it will show you inline notification which field is wrong. So it's expecting a value here for beneficiary. It shouldn't it shouldn't be a null value. So I, I am inputting a value. If I have followed Gene's instructions, I think Gene has a drop down, so this shouldn't happen. And then I try to say. 
So now it says contract end date. It gives you the inline notification. So you should be able to see the contract end date should be later than the start date. Once it passes all of the validations, it will move to the good, good record report. Now you may ask me, should I be correcting every gift record like this? Ideally, I'm not expecting any bad record because you will be following the instructions and you will be preparing the data based on the instructions. And Gene has already put in enough validations on the template for yes or no and things like that. So um, ideally, there shouldn't be any record in the bad record report. But if there is some, the system will help you what validation went wrong and the system will help you to correct your data as well. Um, so I, I just want to correct the second data and then and, and I will show you how to upload the contract document. I'm not sure why it is this slow, Gene. I was here this morning. It wasn't this slow. But while we're waiting for it to pull up, can you take a question? Yes. Uh, yes, yes, please go ahead. So can we complete the spreadsheet on our own computer and then download, or do you have to download the template and then fill it out in, in the application? You, you download the template to your computer and then you open up open it up in Excel and then you fill fill your data. Then you are done filling the data in your Excel. You save it on your computer and then okay. come back and load it in the application. OK, OK, got it. So it automatically fills fills out all the fields. We don't have to do it one by one. In, are right. you talking about in the template? What, once you upload the template, it automatically yes, fills you, up all the fields. Yes, once okay. you upload the template, the report displays all of the fields. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, to answer your question, if the, if the template is done 100% correctly at your piece, at your station, when you load it up, you that's what was to Felsi's point. If everything is completely accurate in the template, when you load it up, you shouldn't have anything to do on the screen. Okay. Right. But in the in the chance, especially there are some schools that have hundreds or some subgroups within a school that may have a hundred records they have to do and they have to associate the files. If if say they did a typo mm -hmm. and they've got the name of the file is a little bit different, uh, and Felsey's going to demo that, or you know if they if they neglected to put in a contract date and they did they, maybe it was a gift but they accidentally said it was a contract, well it would come up here and it would say. Uh, you've designated this as a contract, but you don't have a beginning contract date. And you would look at that and you could correct it here and say, oh, wait a minute, that wasn't a contract, that was a gift. Um, so we, we try, but if, but to answer your question, if the template is done with 100% accuracy on your PC without any typos or errors in, in data, uh, it should, you should be able to load it and not have to do anything up here, except for associated. You will see an empty report. Yeah, if your template is correct, you won't see any bad records. The bad records report would be empty and all of your records would be under this good report. Okay, thank you. Now I have corrected the data, but I, I still can't submit. The reason is I haven't associated the contract document yet. So Jean was mentioning about the file name in the template. It's listing the time, listing the file names here. So when you go and upload your contract document for the first record, it's expecting the file name to be gift one. So it's displaying, hey, the file name has to be gift one dot PDF. So if you try to upload, say, gift three, it, it, it wouldn't accept. It will say, no, the file name is not matching. So you have to make sure the contract document has the same file name. 
as you have given in the template. So I have uploaded one contract document. The submit button is still disabled. I want to upload the second document. Now I am an, I'm an uploader or a reviewer, so I'm not a data submitter. So once I finish my once I finish my finished associating contract documents for every record, you can see here the documents are attached. Now the submit button is enabled. So I am an uploader. I have to submit this to my submitter. So I press submit. So it says an email. So in an email goes to the submitter role. The email is not. I think the email is taking its time. So an email will go to the data administrator telling, hey, this person has submitted this data for you for your review. Now I'm going to log in as a data administrator for you. Now any questions so far? Yeah, I have another one. It's, there are some quite a few contracts have several agreements. Can you upload several agreements? I I think. No. Go ahead, Gene. So so no. So the way the statute and everything's re, uh, re, so if you have a single uh, a single record and you have multiple gift or contract documents, you just need to bring those together into one PDF. We're, we're doing a one to one association. Um, now, on the other hand, if you have for some reason you have three different types of gifts within one document, we do allow you to reload that same document multiple times, but we really need a one to one association. So if you have a single record uh, from a single entity uh, for the full amount and it's just one record, but you have three gift documents, we would just say uh, append those into one PDF. Because again, the, the auditing team is going to be pulling a sample um, and they're going to be doing it on a one to one basis. OK, that's helpful. The other question I have is the naming. I, I, I didn't quite understand. Are, you, are we naming the agreements gift one, gift two, gift three, or are we saying Saudi Arabia embassy gift one? So there's so much variation among the groups that we left that open to each entity or sub entity. Uh, so in your institution, in particularly, and, and some institutions have one compliance office doing ev aggregating everything. Others are kind of decentralizing and letting subgroups do it. This system will allow you to assign multiple uh, uploaders if you wanted to, or you could hand the, the, the template out to groups and they could send all the information back to a central place and one person could do this process. So there was a little bit of variation. So the, the, the only requirement is that each individual record that identifies a foreign entity for that particular contract or gift for the amount you know, that meets the requirement. Yeah, thank you, Fauci. So each of these individual records uh, the, the file name here has to match the one you're uploading and associating with this record. And we did that using the file name because we didn't, well, one, we didn't have time to try to program in kind of any kind of large back patch process because of the, the complexity. But also we, we just didn't want to challenge. We, we can't really have the wrong contract associated with the wrong record in large scale because trying to un, untangle that is going to be very difficult. So this is kind of a one to one. The gift one, gift two was just what Felsey did for her testing. Um, so let's say you have a foundation that has a gift they have to report. Maybe you give them the template and they send it back to you with one record and a contract. And then you had a research group that had three gifts to report. You could hand them the template and they could send that back to you. Uh, with the three records and the three contracts, and then you just you can upload them in a central place. Or again, you can use it as a little bit of a decentralized situation. If you wanted to assign the foundation a person to upload and associate and assign the uh, research group to upload, up, you know, to do associations themselves, 
we we tried to make it flexible because of the, the the way the system is and i think a lot of data administrators and their groups are used to aggregating and pulling data together um and doing this type of thing and, it, and again we also were informed there are a particular institutions that were the compliance office was going to do everything for the whole group so we tried to make it flexible does that answer your question tony yes thank you Jean? Now, oh, go ahead. Uh, just one more question, but I think uh, just to clarify, but the name of the file can be whatever you want it to be. Is that correct? That is correct. So if uh, if the foundation folks name theirs foundation, uh, you know, Jap J Japanese gift from to the foundation, well, however they want to name that is fine as long as it matches the record that has the statutory required indicators in it. So when you upload the document here, it has to match what was in the spreadsheet template. And we're using that as a control. So if you if you have foundation.pdf here, the contract document has to be foundation.pdf as well. Go ahead, uh, Felsi, delete the contract on one and re-upload it and, and we can kind of Talk okay. to the naming convention. Okay. Uh, also, if you've realized you've, uh, you know, if let's say a, 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 a someone gave you a template and then they called you up well, before you submitted it to the board office and they said, hey, I misnamed that one record. That one contract really wasn't from the foundation. It was, uh, I mean, it wasn't from Japan. It was from Indonesia. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you would be able to go in there and not have to re-upload, retype everything, but just all you'd have to do is reassociate the document. Or to Sonia's point, let's say they gave you a single document and they came back a day later and said, oh, I, I realized we had three documents we had to put together in a single PDF and two of them got left out. I've got a corrected document for you, gift document. You could go in here before it's submitted to the board office and you could go to the records, even if there are 100 or 200, find that one record, you can delete it, and then you can re-upload the corrected document without having to go through the whole process. So we were trying to make it easier to do the one-off corrections. Now, honestly, if someone, you know, misses the shows, maybe they handed it to a student and they said, here, go put in these 100 records, and they were all misassociated for somehow the document names, you could just start over from the template, uh, but we wanted to make sure that you had the ability to fix those minor things without redoing the entire template and every single association. And that was the goal of, of making it uh, a little more flexible. Is, is there any limit to the number of characters in the naming convention, in the file name? Yes, the database, uh, I forgot what the actual... I have to check. I think it might be a thousand characters. It's pretty. It's fairly low. Not for the um, file name, Gene. Oh, not for the no, file I don't name. Think it's, no, I don't think it's thousand for the file name. No, uh, I got, I'm guessing it's hundred or something. We'll we'll look at that and uh, let can you guys increase know that if if that uh, there is a necessary for us to increase that, uh, we can increase that as well. Yeah. Um, just to clarify what Jean was telling, I have given the name gift1.pdf in my template. So my template has, there is a column that says file name here. So my template has gift1.pdf for that record. And the report is displaying that. So the system is expecting the contract document to have the same name. So when you are uploading your contract document, it says this is the name you have given in your template. So, so you need to match match that gift one. If this name is different, it wouldn't accept it. So earlier I was a uploader and I sent it to the submitter. Now I have logged in as a submitter. I see all of the records are corrected and the documents or contract documents are associated for every gift record. Now, I can submit to board or 
the data administrator may want to upload more templates. All you need to do is click on that upload gets data button and then you go and I'm going to add another template now. Follow the same instructions. It says parse, press the parse button and the data is shown here. Enter the line number corresponding to the last gift record in this box. So I'm going to enter three. And then it says that press the upload data button. So press the upload data button. So now I'm the submitter now. So you might have four or five people in your institution uploading the template, but I am the submitter. The submitter cannot submit to board unless until all of the gift records are corrected if you have bad records. And then all of the contract documents are associated with every gift record. Now, you we we make sure that you have the ability to edit everything. So, for example, I want to delete this gift record. It's a bad gift record. I, I want to delete it. You have the ability to delete a gift record. Now there is one bad record. All you need to do is you correct that gift record. Let me go ahead and correct that gift record so that I'm trying to show you that you can upload multiple templates. Different people can upload multiple templates. So it says this this has to have some value. Contract ended. OK, Chelsea, this is yes. uh, Ken from USF. Will yes. different uploaders have access to other uploaders templates to modify? Is that something that would happen or do they only have access to their own template that they uploaded? I think they can see only their only their data can. But but the thing is, if another uploader hasn't finished their job, this uploader cannot submit. Um, even if they can see the data, they can't delete the data. Um, I have to I have to I have to check the system. Um, yeah, but, we, we may. So, 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 Felsi, so we, we try, can we try to make the system uh, again, thinking of the po potential for multiple uploaders, even in a single, you know, IR shop or data administrator shop, you might have, you know, if you're doing it centrally, you might have two people both have uh, documents, you know, get up there to associate the documents. We didn't want, you know, one person to accidentally delete the other person's so they can work on theirs, but I think they might be able to see a list of the records in the final review area, but I don't, you know, again, I don't think that they, uh, one one person can't delete in something else someone else is working on, but they can delete and clean their own stuff until you get up to the submitter role. You know, the higher the role you have, uh, the more capability you have. So it is hierarchical. So if you're just a, sub, if you're an uploader uh, or a reviewer, you can only maintain your own stuff as far as uploading and, and associating documents and changing data. Uh, this, and then once it moves to the data administrator, the data administrator does have the ability at the higher level to look at all of the information and to delete a single record regardless of who loaded it. Uh, but again, just a hierarchical structure of access and controls uh, otherwise, you'd have to send everything back every time to the lower levels, and that you know, for trying to tweak one little thing could could create a lot of delays. Uh, we we tried to make it flexible, I guess. Thank you. Me? So now, really, you think I, I so? Still, do we do we still have questions? Is that is that a question or um, something? We had to go outside for like two seconds. Go ahead so and the, sub the submitter, they still can't submit to board. The submit to board is disabled because 
I corrected the data and I have an uploaded my contract document. And it's the contract, the name, the file name is gift3.pdf. So um, now I'm attaching the contract document and I say upload. So once you have associated the contract document with every gift record. So I see all of the documents are attached. Now you can submit to board. So the data administrator cannot submit to board until all of the, if you say, for example, you have 100 gift records, all of the 100 gift records should be good records and it should have 100 associated documents. Until then, you can the submit to board button will be disabled. So now you can submit to board. So once you submit to board, three things will happen. The first thing will be it will send an email. Let me see, I get an email. So it will send an email. See, it says it has been submitted by UF. So it sends an email to the board staff. The second thing is when you go to the home page, it locks, the system gets locked. Once you submit the data, you just cannot do anything until the board office asks for resubmission. So you, the, the, you can't do anything. Now, when you go to the home page, your, your status has changed to submitted, and then it, it's the color has changed, the status has changed to submitted. Now, if you go to your reports section, you will be able to see what you have submitted to the board office. So, Felsi, is that submitting one template at a time if there's multiples or all of them at once? No, all of them at once. OK. Because once you, the data administrator have submitted it, the system gets logged. They cannot do anything. So Kathy, all of the in, templates in are uploaded and then the data administrator submits to the board office. So, I mean, it may be advantageous for us to use multiples just um, to batch it for different groups of uh, things, but then there's no way for us to indicate and say there's five templates and we're done. That's the last one, right? We just have to internally manage that. Uh, if you are an, yes, say for example, your data administrator has given access to three uploaders and right. three people are working in the institution until those three people finish associating documents and uploading it, they can't send it to the data administrator. So, okay. so, so once the data administrator will be able to see everything and, and, and that they can see if a document is not attached, they, they can edit everything. Um, so one more question about the country list. If, if we have a country that's not on the list, we need to reach out to you. Yes. I, I, oh, yes. 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 I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm confident Jean has it all, but but yes, please read well, out to yeah, us. Yeah, we run it. We typically run into it in admissions and other things, so it won't surprise me if we find one. But yeah, I, I use the most current ISO list, but okay. you know, you just never know. You're you're right. That that happens. Hey, a couple of clarifying points too, uh, Kathy. You're completely correct. If you had three or four different subgroups submitting. You need to wait for them. You, we we don't we didn't containerize. We could we just didn't have time to containerize and subgroup. And you know, with so many var variable subgroups and groups and affiliates, you know, trying to manage the access and controls for that in the time frame was impossible. So a key thing to remember is yes, you have to wait and manage all the subgroups. When, once you get everything loaded that's when the data administrators should do that final submit to the board. So that includes any uh, template that you gave to any subgroup, including affiliates. So that's a the, the data administrator submitting to the board is the final step when all of the information is collected. And again, unfortunately, we were not able to segment out affiliates in the time frame that we had. So affiliates do need to come through the data administrator for access controls and that the, the data administrator, as I'd mentioned, I don't know if you were on the call at that point, is the presidential appointed person for the university to right. submit data to the board. So we've we have that mechanism in all of our applications. 
in the future, we, you know, there's some, you know, there'll be room for improvement, some things we can do as we go through. We will meet this first deadline, <laughs> statutory deadline, and then we'll 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 have a monitoring phase, and then we'll have a phase two as we move forward uh, for improvements. And uh, definitely, access control is going to be one thing that we work on. And then we appre appreciate the flexibility. Thanks, Gene. Um, so again, if we're doing multiple templates and we need to, we decide oh, uh, this one template's messed up. There are a whole bunch of mistakes we can reload that template among multiples. So if we use the same name, it will keep it straight. For, um, and or just, up, so I think you have to, so there, there's a loaded by or a user that actually okay. submitted that bad template. Uh, so the, the, the records would be identified. You'd have to clean those out, I believe. Isn't that right, Felsi? There is a button. I see, I, I think I forgot to show you. Now the system is locked. There is a button for you to delete all of your gift records and associate the documents and start over. In in one template. Or in, in one everything. template. In one yes. template, just yes. blank it out. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, I'm not sure. That's if per it's, user, if it's, probably per user, isn't it, Felsi? Yeah, yeah, it is per user, not one template. You are right, Gene. It is per uh, user. Okay. So if you had one user who made some big mistakes, you could start over. But as you can see, the, I mean, the, the most odious part of this whole process is the file association process. Um, if you, you know, you get to all, you get through, we're editing the data on the template itself. Then we edit the data in the template to make sure the cross validations are okay. Then you get to the association component. Hopefully, by the time we get there, no one's going to have so many mistakes and make so many mistakes, you have to wipe someone's whole item out. That's why we gave you the one-off capability. But if it does happen, hopefully, if there's one subgroup with one person working on it, that person could sign in, clean their stuff out without affecting all of the other subgroups, all the other people that are working, and they could reload from fresh and start over. Um, is there, yeah. On the objects of the documents that have to be attached, is there a PDF? file size limit and is do you is there a preferred PDF version? So there's no PDF version preference. Uh, we are restricting the PDF for security reasons. The file size we haven't we're doing because you're associating and loading one document at a time. I believe there is a web restriction on the web application server. I don't know if we've hit that. We hit so we, I loaded up a couple of big documents. I'm sure we'll probably find it, Kathy. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, unfortunately, Sonia will find it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For yeah. us. But we'll um, we'll be monitoring um, as we're going forward. I think if there is a restriction, we we've already I've had my uh, DBA and some others looking at the web logic server to you know to be able to adjust. I believe it's a. I, f I forgot what they said the default limit was, but we've already been discussing that. We just haven't, we don't know if we'll hit it yet. Um, so funny, if we can, since we can edit in the system, if we're just doing minor edits to something that's been filled out and uploaded, is there a way to download when we're done the final version so we retain a complete version of what we submitted? Yes. So I showed you, uh, let me show you the report again. Um, okay, so sorry about that. You go to the reports, yep. and then you say foreign gifts and uh, contract documents. The first report says data submitted to the board office. You go to the actions button and you say download. So it will download this report for you, what okay. has been submitted to the board office. Okay, we're good. Once the board staff accepts the accepts this data, this data moves to the bottom. It says data accepted by the board office, and you can still download this as well. Okay. I have I have a question. Will, yes. If if you don't have the end date for your contract, for example, will it show up as an error? Yes. So is that a required field, Dean? The contract it, 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 end date is that required? I think it's a it's one of our required edits that contracts, quote unquote, contracts, not gifts, but contracts have to have a begin and end date. Uh, and I think that's 
I think that's pretty standard in contract stuff. So, yeah. It, it, have you run into a situation where there's an open-ended contract? Is that what you're? Yes, yes. But it just it just came across it, it today, and I was just wondering if it was going to be a hard stop. You you know there it, it, as long as you could put a date in the future, uh, you maybe even default it to uh, you know January first. Uh, you know all night all night. I think as long as it's a valid date format, it will work. Okay. Um, you know, I don't know. That's something that we didn't discuss with Julie and uh, Vicki as far as, you know, I, I, that's the first we've heard of an open-ended contract, but uh, maybe we come with a standard and put that in the instructions. Okay. And there's but, also a comment field, right? And I thought we could put in the comment field something. Correct. Correct. Okay. Jean, this is Masha from USF. I have a question. So with the affiliates information um, within that institution field, that's where we would distinguish between what's a university versus what's the what we are transmitting on behalf of an affiliate. So that's a that the university reserve field is for your own use. You could do it there. I would think it would be better if you uh, could you have the template still up, Felsi? Yeah, yes, yes. I was thinking the institution field there. I saw on what Felty was showing as far as the report, that institution field is where we would distinguish between what's uh, what we're transmitting on behalf of an affiliate versus what we're transmitting on behalf of ourselves. So the gift recipient field would probably be, uh, you know, um, might be a better place to distinguish an affiliate. The reserve field, the yeah, yeah, is that the field you're speaking of, the gift recipient? Well, there was that one, uh, but then the report that Felty was showing, it had an institution field. Right, and that, well, that's that's, a, that's not in the template. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, never mind. So then, yes, it would be the gift recipient. Yes. Yeah, I, I would think the recipient would be where you'd want it. And the, our template here, our example, just uses the university, but you could put Moffitt, you could put, uh, you know, Shans, you could put, uh, you know, uh, USF Foundation if you wanted to. There's no restriction in that field on the recipient. We, we, we didn't lock that one down because we knew there would be a lot of variation. Uh, at your own institution, you may want to and we we don't have a at our office obviously and, and I know this is the first time for many of you you may not have a full fill on all the different groups is there a research department in the College of Education that got one of these and would you want to say College of Education I don't know we've left that flexible for you guys yeah I see that that's to me is more along the lines of that's where the University of Reserve field would be used because I mean, especially for the for those three institutions that are transmitted on, a be, on behalf of the affiliates, um, we want to identify what is the affiliate versus what is we are transmitting on behalf of our own institution. Yeah, I would say that the gift recipient. When you look at the reports, um, the report, you know, we're you, we're also we capture your uh, university acronym through the sign on for the data administrator when it's submitted. So the database yeah. is going to have USF in there in a field. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm concerned that the data that we are transmitting on behalf of affiliate is not a USF data. So that's correct. where I, <laughs> I don't, correct. And but I don't want I them identified as a DSO that we're transmitting on behalf of either. So that's to me, those are a little bit different. I totally understand that. And again, you know, we're not really set up. We were never set up for affiliates or uh, the even DSOs for that matter in this particular situation. I would suggest the recipient field for now. Uh, the institution field is is a system field from the submitter, which is going to be you. Uh, at U is going to be USF, uh, the way the system set up. Now in the future, you know, again, as we move forward with this, maybe we can... Uh, create some more segmentation. Uh, we've got to deal with our access management. We don't have any controls outside of data administrators at this point. And as most of you know, we have been, we're trying to prepare for federation, which could create even more issues with this application and others if we have affiliates or people who aren't in your actual security system. So we're going to have to think that through on this application, particularly to see as we go forward in the future how we can containerize people better. We just, well, yeah. 
I think that from the standpoint of the standard data collection, so Kathy, are you guys, um, how are you identifying your affiliates? Which field are you guys using? I think we all, the, the three institutions that are in this boat, we just need to agree which field we're using to determine what's, what we're transmitting on behalf of our university versus what we're transmitting on behalf of an affiliate and use that consistently. My, my only concern is the standard consistent use of, uh, of data so that the board office has a way of distinguishing what we're transmitting on behalf of the affiliate versus what we're transmitting on behalf of our own. So, uh, did you ask Kathy? Yes, I did. <laughs> um, hang on, having trouble. Sonia, do you want to respond to that about affiliates? Well, yeah. if, if Jean suggests using the gift recipient, I'll put it there. Are you yep. guys using the gift recipient field for, like, are you distinguishing between uh, which DSOs are included in there, or are you just putting UF in there as a gift recipient? Well, well, this is our first time, so. This is Tara. We, we wouldn't distinguish between the DSOs because um, we would view that as sort of part of our, you know, the University of Florida as it, as I would read the rule, but we would distinguish with like affiliate, like Shands, and then we have the report on behalf of that. Um, okay, so, so then that, we're- That medical marijuana consortium, we would also identify that. Okay, perfect. So then the gift recipient, we either put the, our institution name or we're putting the affiliate name. Thank you. So, Felsi, is that uh, did we finalize? There was that that was pretty much it uh, on on yes. the application itself. Yes. So, so questions, again, I think I, questions. I, yeah, questions and discussion. I know there again. This is the first time. It's always rough the first time on a data collection, and again at the breakneck speed we did this at. Whew. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's been fun. Uh, yeah, Christmas. So yeah, yeah, we didn't get two weeks off like you guys. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know a lot of you didn't either. <laughs> so I get to pick on you. Some more questions, and I know. Uh, just again, I had mentioned at the beginning of the meeting. I'm not sure we were recording at that point. We're willing to stay on. We know that we have some affiliates here. If the data administrators and affiliate folks want to stay on and talk about access management and how that works, we're okay. I've, I've cleared my calendar. Uh, for a little bit here, and are there any more questions on the app or any questions in general? I just want to add that please reach out to me if you have any questions when you're using the application. I'm I'm always available. I told Jean I'm not taking off in January until all the institutions complete submitting their data. So please reach out to me. I'll be happy to help in any way. I have one more question, Mary from FIU. Uh, the first column, are you calling it reserve column? Yes. Gift reserve. How are uh, people anticipating using that? For what type of information? So, so I think in the data administrators me meeting that we had before, there was a question about, you know, if I have hundreds of records coming from multiple groups and there's some kind of issue, how do I communicate back and forth between the board office once the data is submitted? Um, and we added that field to allow you the flexibility within your institution to either number or do some type of nomenclature there for identification on the records. Um, and again, that that could be that could be as detailed as an affiliate and a contract number or a subgroup or just a number. I, I, I'm, I, we left that for you guys to use for the benefit of tracking the individual records as a whole when you submit them to the board. Because as you guys know, what may happen is there's one strange record that gets all the way up through all the edits to the board office and someone may have to say, hey, it's this record, but you're dealing with hundreds. It may be easier to say, hey, it was a re it was record 122. 
in the spreadsheet or in the collection. Uh, but again, we left it's completely an open field for you guys to determine your best use internally because everybody's doing it differently. Thank you. You know, so uh, we will send Felsey's email out to everybody who was on the meeting. Another thing too, we're we're not just offering help for the data administrators. Uh, if any affiliates or subgroups, even just with the template, if you guys do as you're moving forward again, this is the very first collection like this. If you run into anything, we will make ourselves available to be able to help you, even to the point of you know signing on through Zoom or Teams and going through screens as you do work on your screen. We're not we're not opposed to doing some service. We're very small. You guys know we don't, you know, we're a very small office, but we want this to be successful. We know how stressful new things are that, you know, were thrown on us really quick. Uh, and someone mentioned the uh, uh, unfunded mandate to me in another meeting. Uh, and they were kind of complaining. And I said, we had an unfunded mandate too. We didn't get staff, we didn't get time. Uh, so, but we're, we want this to be successful. We want it to be as painless as possible. We know it's painful. <laughs> I think there is a question, Jean. Is it Sarah? Hi, yes, oh. I did have a, a quick question. I was hoping to get a new version of the template. So I'm at Moffitt Cancer Center. And so we obviously can't download the template ourselves. Um, the template that was passed along to us um, doesn't have the same drop down field. So I think maybe it's an older version. So I was wondering if there was any way you guys could email out um, a version of the template for us to start filling out. Can you, yes. I, I put my email address in the chat. If you can send me your email address, I would be happy to send that re recent version of the template. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And honestly, no again, if there are affiliates and the data administrators coordinating, you know, the associated data administrators on the call here today, let's talk about what needs to happen so that you can sign on, you know, yourself and download the template. I, I hesitate. I mean, we can download one and email it out, but it, it's much better you know, to go to the source if we can. Plus, you need to be able to get into the system anyway, it sounds like. So, yeah, Sarah, I, we got it covered. Um, we already, we Ken and I uh, just talked about the plan moving forward. We, we are fully um, open to granting you guys access into the system so that you can upload your own data. And you will get the um, updated template from the system as well. Okay, thank you. Right, any other questions from the group in general? Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> There's so many people on, I can't see everybody to see if hands are raised, so I apologize. Okay, well, if, if anyone would like to stay on, um, uh, I don't know if uh, Keith King from UWF or if uh, anyone from his staff are here, but if anybody would like to stay on, talk about access management or you know anything, if they, if they haven't uh, touched base and have a plan, uh, we'll be happy to stay on. Otherwise, feel free to email us for questions or help as you're going through the process. We will we will try to do the best we can to, uh, again, make it painless. All right, okay. thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. all have a great day then. Thank, thank you. you all. Thanks for your work thank on you. this. Thank you. Bye. So, Felsey, we'll just hang on. Uh, yes, yes. I think we...